Okay, yeah, so my name is Kevin Vandekar. I'm with Autodesk. I work for a group called the Forge Partner Development Group, and we are uh, part of the group that's technical evangelists, uh, similar to the Microsoft Developer Network evangelists. And we go out and we try to promote our APIs. So Autodesk Forge is relatively new. It's the branding for our web services that have APIs. So let's start with one of the biggest challenges in the AR VR space, it's model preparation. So UV mapping, uh, materials, all those kinds of things don't often translate well. So if you import into Unity, for example, directly from another format, there may be some work that you have to do to get that model in a format that you can render on an AR or VR device. So it ends up being many hours for a typical model. We actually did an experiment on this. Um, we hired an artist to take a model, put it into Autodesk Fusion, uh, do some modeling there, and then try to bring that model into Unity. Uh, the artist kicked in, and it took almost a week to get something that was animatable and that looked de decent. Um, so the workflow is hard. So our goal is to make model prep easier. Um, and also to view the latest uh, design data as well. So this gives you more time to develop the app and to provide the things that you want and not have to worry so much about the um, source data. So the first piece of this is the model derivative API. Um, Forge model derivative is designed to basically take any 3D format out there. We're supporting, I think, 65 or so today and translate it into something that's more lightweight. So uh, uh, it's currently optimized for WebGL. Uh, we have a viewer uh, that will allow you to view that directly on the web. So model derivative includes a translation phase, which will give you um, the derivatives from these different formats, um, including thumbnails and geometry extraction. Um, you also get this uh, metadata from it, so any of the original model metadata is maintained. So as long as the format supports that metadata, we will extract it and include it in this uh, lightweight form. Um, the Forge Data Management API is the place where you will work with that data. So after the translation is done, the data will stay either in our cloud storage so the object storage service from us, or you can extract it using the same API to your own data storage. Okay, so this allows multiple applications to very easily access the same data set. So as a developer, you may have one application that is viewing it in a certain way for the, um, the CEOs and the high-level management, and you may have another application that um, views the same model in a way for markup and collaboration. So part of the Forge services is the Forge Viewer. The Forge Viewer um, already supports web VR. So we've kind of got this solution for lightweight VR using uh, web VR specification. But what's not clear is where AR is going in that web space. So we've already seen the web VR specification kind of come out with a new rev, and they're projecting to the future uh, to call it web XR, which would include an AR component and make this more um, accessible to the web. So that's a great story. But what we're a little worried about is how much time that's going to take. It took a long time for browsers to accept web VR, for example. Um, so we were back kind of in the, the Internet uh, Explorer days where you had to support all the different browsers in a different way. Um, and we're a little bit worried about that. So we don't think that's a solution that's coming immediately. So what we want to do is more immediately provide um, an AR solution as well as improve the VR workflow with the ability to control more um, pieces of the authoring process. So we currently have this AR VR toolkit in Tech Preview and one of the uh, important aspects to this is supporting game engines. So right now obviously Unity is a really popular um, platform 
to create these AR and VR experiences. They provide this nice uh, facility to simply bring the content in, author your experience, and then publish it to the platform of your choice. Um, they've been really good at supporting HoloLens, um, HTC Vive, and some of the other VR experiences. Uh, so we think that that's a good solution to start with. Um, but long term, we think that this will um, uh, project itself into other engine type technologies. So maybe Unreal Engine, maybe some authoring tools that we don't even see yet. Okay, so we're trying to keep this kind of a, a simple uh, uh, toolkit from the access point of the Forge APIs. So there's two different workflows that you can consume. Um, you can use Forge in the traditional API ways. So if you're a Forge developer already, nothing changes. You just consume this toolkit to make it work within Unity for the moment. Um, you're going to then use scripts that call the Forge APIs in the exact same way you would do it without Unity, for example. Um, it provides um, the ability to load the asset in one of two ways. So you can choose to load it statically, like you would if you were importing a model into the Unity engine at authoring time. Or we provide a way that allows you to load the model at runtime. So you basically point to the model's data. We use uh, encrypted URNs for that. And you provide your authentication information, so basically your developer ID credentials. And then at runtime, it will authenticate you and pull the latest version of that asset into the runtime at that time. So one of the drawbacks, of course, is a little bit of latency from loading that model because you're doing it at runtime, you're streaming it down. Um, but the advantage is you wait 30 seconds to a minute for even a lar fairly large model and you've got the latest design. And you didn't have to reauthor your deployment to the HoloLens, for example. So you basically just run it again against the latest model, and you've got it. All right? <clears throat> so the different workflows are kind of diagrammed here. Um, so the four APIs are over here on the left. We have a new layer called developerapi.autodesk.io that we're running in beta at the moment. And that's what's providing this AR VR piece. We plan to expand that to allow things like model decimation control. So currently with our Forge um, standard APIs, you can't control that. But we understand that that's a very critical and important aspect to the AR VR experience. So one of the things we'll do is post-process the original model in this extra layer. Um, down here on uh, the lower left is your own data management app or service, so you can connect databases to it. All the original object identifiers from the source model are maintained in this Forge uh, model derivative service. So if you have um, the chair in this Revit model linked to a database manufacturer's site, that link can be, be maintained through the whole process. Um, so once it gets processed, then on the, your computer, you're basically authoring your app for, let's say, the HoloLens. You build and deploy, and then when that app runs, it goes back and retrieves the latest version of that model. OK, and then the static version is very similar, but instead of uh, at runtime, you're actually pulling it in from uh, the, the Forge service during the authoring phase. That gives you a little bit more control over what the model looks like. You could probably add uh, additional Unity shaders and Unity features if you want. But the drawback there is that it's a static asset. Once it's imported, that's a Unity asset now, and it's not connected back to the original model. Um, now, there's no reason you couldn't reauthor that and using the Forge APIs pull the latest model every time you want to deploy a new version of your app. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so this brings us to um, what, what are the possibilities with this. Um, imagine being able to share and collaborate on designs, and that's the most important aspect that we think the Forge um, 
services can bring to this whole AR VR experience is the ability to share design um, in a collaborative environment in these AR VR spaces and always get the latest version of your model. Um, the data remains at the center and is stored in the Forge cloud. You can extract it to your own cloud so it stays in the cloud, but you basically are accessing the latest information. Okay, so if you want further information, you can go to forge.autodesk.com. QR code will take you there. These slides with the links are already posted to my LinkedIn slide share. Um, and I just want to leave you with something interesting here. Um, there's this artist out there, I don't know if you've seen him, uh, Marty Cooper. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel. He did this a couple of years ago. Um, and he does this, this uh, hand-drawn augmented reality, which is just very cool. I, I just stumbled on this kind of looking for uh, something to leave you with, and uh, this was perfect. Um, so he's got a whole channel of different hand-drawn things. He basically takes this piece of plastic out and draws the augmentation on site. So thank you very much. <laughs>